Unsolved murders, just on their own, are awful to think about. No one knows what happened or why. Even worse, when there is no way to identify who the deceased even was. But when the murdered victim is a child, well that's on a whole different level. The Boy in the Box On February 25, 1957, Fred Bananas was driving down Susquehanna Road in Fox Chase, Philadelphia when he spotted a rabbit jump into the forest. He stopped his car and ran after it. He noticed a few muskrat traps, but eventually he came across a cardboard box. Inside was what looked like a doll, or the body of a small child. Fred wasn't going to call the police at first, but the next day he told them what he found. The police went to the location of the body and took fingerprints. They were hopeful that the identity of the child, who was roughly four to six years old, would be discovered quickly. Sadly, that wouldn't be the case. The crime scene, along with the surrounding area, was checked and rechecked. 270 police academy recruits combed the forest for clues. All they found was a man's blue corduroy cap, a child's scarf, and a white handkerchief with the letter G in the corner. None of these items held any clues to help with the case. The child was found completely nude, but he was wrapped in a blanket. Unfortunately, the blanket too proved to be no help at all. During the autopsy, it was determined that the cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. They also noticed that the boy's fingernails and toenails were trimmed and his hair was recently cut. They were able to make out bruises on his forehead as if someone with a forceful hand was holding his head still while they cut his hair. So this led the police to believe that his hair was cut either just before his death or immediately after his death. And the hair was probably cut in an attempt to hide the child's identity. If that were the case, it worked. The police had no leads to find out who the boy was. There were many suspects. Fred Bananas, the man who reported the body, well, his original story of chasing a rabbit into the forest, that may have been a lie. Turns out Fred had a history of spying on the women at the Good Shepherd School for Wayward Girls. And that may have been the real reason why he didn't want to tell the police what he had found. Fred voluntarily took a polygraph and passed. The police determined he was not involved with the murder. It was also discovered that Fred wasn't the first person to find the body. John, who was 18 years old, claimed that he discovered the body on February 22nd or the 23rd. He was afraid to tell the police because he was the owner of all those muskrat traps, and he was worried he would get in trouble. And still, he was believed to not be responsible. The police even dressed up the body and placed him in a seated position, in hopes that someone would recognize him. Nothing came of it. Even a psychic was used. The psychic led them to a foster home, but that was just another dead end. In 1998, his body was exhumed to collect DNA. He was then reburied at Ivy Hill Cemetery. A facial reconstruction was released on March 21, 2016, and it was added to the files of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The case remains open to this day. The St. Louis Jane Doe On February 28, 1983, in St. Louis, Missouri, two people were rummaging through abandoned buildings looking for scrap metal. They went to the basement of a long abandoned apartment building on 5635 Clemens Avenue. One of the men flicked his lighter and that's when they found the body of an African American girl, hands tied behind her back and wearing only a bloody stained v-neck sweater with no tag and her head was missing at first the homicide detectives believed that she was a prostitute however during the autopsy it was discovered that she hadn't even went through puberty yet she was between 8 to 11 years of age the lack of blood at the crime scene meant that her head was removed somewhere else Another gruesome and absolutely horrific fact was found during the autopsy. The young girl was raped. 
The coroner believes that the cause of death was strangulation and that her murder happened three or five days prior to her body being found. The detectives searched the surrounding area for the girl's head, but it was never found. Obviously, that made things extremely difficult. They checked with the local schools and all the children were accounted for. They looked through the database of missing children, yet there was no match that fit her description. The detectives would have thought that someone would have come forward by now about their missing child, but no one ever did. The case went cold and 10 months later, the little girl was buried at Washington Park Cemetery. 10 years go by, 1993, and detectives mailed the blood-soaked sweater and rope to a psychic in Florida. Sadly, that was a huge waste as all the evidence got lost in the mail. A man by the name of Vernon Brown was at one time suspected to be the little girl's killer. He was executed in 2005 for other murders, but there was no evidence that could link him to the murder of the unknown girl. Advancements in forensic science sparked new hope into the case. In 2013, it was decided they would exhume the body to collect her DNA, but the first step would be to find where she was buried. Due to awful record keeping and the fact her gravestone was unmarked, it was a bit of a challenge. Thanks to many volunteers, they were able to find her and send her body to the medical examiner's office. Unfortunately, even with all the new scientific techniques, the police believe that she may never be identified. She was reburied in Cavalry Cemetery in a section called the Garden of Innocence. The many people who were involved with this case have given the little girl a name. Instead of Jane Doe, the tombstone reads, Precious Hope. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Once again, my name is Rick, and I'll see you next time on The Unsolved.